We are back here with another edition of the Curator's Corner and Phil Schreier, the senior curator of the National Farms Museum. Welcome back and Phil, you've not only brought us a wonderful looking firearm, but a whole leg of story here with pictures and, and, and documents and receipts. It's really neat. Tell us about this Colt 1877 Lightning. John, thanks again for having us on the show as always. Uh, this is a, uh, a Colt 77 Lightning. Uh, it's a double action revolver, or some back then would call it self-cocking. Uh, means that you can pull the trigger and the hammer will automatically go back, the cylinder will rotate, and then the hammer will fall in a new uh, chamber in the cylinder. And uh, before then, all previous Colts were single action. You had to actually cock the hammer back aim it and then pull the trigger to get the gun to work. Uh, but this was Colt's first attempt at a double action, uh, which was almost the standard uh, mechanism used overseas, especially in, in England with Adams and Dean Adams and Dean and Tranners. They were mostly double actions because they were trying to get around Colt's patent and a great big argument uh, you know, arose as to which was more effective, a gun you could fire fast or one that you could fire more accurately, because, oh. you know, with a single action, you get to aim it. Uh, but the uh, first attempt uh, was not the charm for Colt, you know, this uh, lightning, even though it was uh, called the lightning to emphasize its fast, fastness, uh, the, the action was kind of weak, and they're notorious for breaking down. Oh, okay. Uh, which is kind of odd because this is the uh, the gun that notorious gunslinger John Wesley Harden uh, carried in the last year of his life in El Paso, Texas, and uh, the uh, the gun is uh, just has a wonderful wealth of provenance. Uh, wow. It is uh, fully documented. Uh, it's a gun that he was. Uh, uh, that he had on him one night at the uh, Gem Saloon in El Paso in 1895. He was playing cards with some guys. Uh, evidently, at one point, he felt one of the gentlemen owed him $95. So he pulled his uh, quote-unquote white-handled pistol <laughs> and walked up, sticking it in the guy's ear, counted out $95, and then walked out of the saloon. Wow. And he was later arrested for that. And... Uh, this gun was inventoried by serial number in the sheriff's ledger. And that's so important oh, man. in establishing provenance on a, on a firearm. Now there's a picture of John Wesley Harden. And I, is that a playing card from that night's card game or is yeah. that from something else? <laughs> Tell us about that. Well, he actually had, you know, by his own account, he says he killed 40 men, uh, probably closer to 20. But in his autobiography, he says 40. Uh, you're not going to get away with that, you know, back then or now, hopefully. Uh, so he actually served 17 years in prison uh, for some of his crimes and uh, put the time to good use, uh, studied law, and came out an attorney. Uh, so he went into the practice of law in El Paso. Uh, and for the last year of his life, he uh, uh, had a law practice there. There's one of his business cards. Uh, but his other business was basically selling these uh, autographed and shot up playing cards to uh, tourists who knew of his notoriety uh, because he had published an autobiography uh, that would come through town looking to, to meet up with the uh, notorious bad man of the Old West. Now you mentioned provenance. Uh, next to you over there, you've got a book that you just pulled these items out of. But there is in there, I see a receipt of sale at one time of this. I see letters in there, articles, numbers of business cards. I guess that's so important with a, a firearm like this. Tell us a little bit about how you, you build up that provenance and, and to help, you know, prove what this gun really is. Well, with anything, you know, I you know we remember the, uh, the OJ trial. They were trying to build up uh, what we call, or they called chain of custody. And that's what we call provenance. Uh, we want to know who held the gun and when. You know, where did it come from? What is the provenance on the gun? Sure, you could go back to the uh, sheriff's ledgers from 1895 and find a single action or a double action like this, get the serial number and go make one if you wanted to. And you say, well, this was John Wesley Harden's. It got it written up right here. Well, where did this gun come from, you know? And uh, what's great about this is that every single owner since Wesley Harden is known 
There are affidavits and uh, uh, documents, notarized, some not, uh, and receipts from every transfer of the gun all the way up Jeez. to its kerner, current owner, Kurt House of uh, Texas, who has loaned this gun to us for our Guns West exhibit. And that's, Phil, what makes the NRA National Farms Museum, as I often say, the preeminent far farms museum in the country because things like this, one of a kind, incredible treasures are to be found there. And, and when you don't own, actually own the farm, there you have it. And, and you guys just, I can only imagine your work you go to track these things down and get them on display there. And, and a lot of care is to be taken in the care and the transference and, and, and everything and just keeping a good eye on this farm like this and then getting on display so the public can see. Well, thank you. We uh, we try real hard to, to make sure what the best stuff is actually out on the exhibit. And it is. Tell us a little bit about Guns West. Guns West is our temporary exhibit that's open till the end of the year. Uh, it's an exhibit in the Ruger, William B. Ruger Gallery of the museum, uh, which uh, rotates every year or so with uh, new and interesting things. I don't quite know what we're doing for 2010, but we've had a great time with Guns West, the uh, story of firearms, the way they were, the way they uh, are, and the way they could have been. Uh, kind of showing you a little bit of the history of the Old West through antiques, modern guns used for cowboy action shooting, and then of course the way it could have been being the, uh, the movies. Excellent. And before that you had a display there about World War II. World and, War II, and, and, and it's it's incredible. It's a great mix. Besides the regular permanent galleries there, there's always something special going there in, in the Ruger Gallery. And, and tell us how people can see that either in person at the Farms Museum or online. Well, uh, you can visit the uh, museum seven days a week uh, from nine to five. I'm sorry, nine thirty to five, uh, except for Saturdays. It's open till seven, uh, or you can visit us from the comfort of your own gambling hall and saloon at home at uh, nationalfiremusmuseum.org. Now, when, uh, just before that, when you display something like this, how do you decide with all this great documentation what you put on display with a firearm like this? Is it the room you have or, or, or how? Uh, take us through that thought process. Space quickly. is obviously the main consideration is how much room do we have. Uh, a lot of times if there's a catalog published with in, in conjunction with an exhibit. We'll put a lot of supporting evidence and material into the catalog that won't make it on display. And with today's uh, scanning ability and digital photography, uh, even though that's the original photograph of, uh, of Wesley Harden, hand tinted, and his original business card, it's uh, almost indistinguishable uh, to the common visitor to have a a copy of that, right. you know, out there today. And uh, so we keep the other stuff safe from ultraviolet rays and, uh, and deterioration by putting copies out and marking them as copies of right. the text. Well, Phil, once again, a, a real neat treasure here out at the National Farmers Museum. Thank you so much for sharing it with us tonight on the Curator's Corner. Thank you, John.